Hi there, and welcome to my video lesson on the anatomical snuff box, along with some notes on extension, flexion, continued from one of my other videos. And I'm gonna get into a little bit of what ulnar and radial deviation are. Full disclaimer, I have a 16 month old baby boy upstairs above me. So if you hear some indiscriminate crying, just know that he's being happy. He wants to be down here with me, but not while Papa is drawing on himself. Maybe in a couple of years, kiddo. But anyway, so I wanted to get into this aspect. So what is the snuff box that I've got written here on the radial side of my wrist? So many years ago when I was in university, my anatomy professor came around and actually was comparing people's snuff boxes. I know that sounds really weird, but she it stuck with me and hopefully I can impart this upon you that when it stuck with me, she would go around and she would like actually kind of uh, palpitate that area and explain what it is and she would actually get into kind of like a snuff box contest which is kind of weird um, but the actual person that had the most visible snuff box actually got like some extra credit points or something anyway so the snuff box is basically this zone that is created between the very long tendons of the extensor pollicus longus pollicus by the way is latin for strong or it's the beginning prefix for strong so these are very, very strong tendons that run from these very deep extensor muscles on the forearm. So I've drawn basically the location of how deep these muscles are. Now these are not very superficial, so um, there's no way for me to show depth on my arm with a drawing, but just keep in mind that these are, this particular muscle is very deep and it has a very, very strong long tendon. I'm trying to zoom in here to see if you can see it on my hand, but you can do this at home by just kind of giving the thumbs up with your your thumb. You can see it just kind of rise there and all underneath that is also its cousin, the extensor pollicus brevis. And I couldn't draw that here just to, it would create too much confusion on my hand if I showed you what it looked like. But in any event, Alongside this too, you have what's known as the abductor pollicis longus, which is another deep muscle. And that, the word abduction, you know, we think of things like kidnapping or things like that, but abduction just simply means to move, means to move away from. So if you abduct your thumb, you're taking it away from the midline, you're taking it away from your index finger or your hand. So abducting is taking away, whereas adduction is adding. So you're adding back, you're abducting. So you see these with those machines in the gym with the, the legs where, you know, if you're sitting down, you know, they have you kind of pull together like this and that's adduction and this is abductors like that, like kind of like scissors. Anyway, so the snuff box is a interesting area because it got its name um, Major League Baseball players and some other sports players used to take tobacco and actually put tobacco there and they used to shove it up their nose or their mouth or wherever they wanted to put it and it kind of served as kind of almost like kind of a, a carrying vessel to kind of put it there and just like do whatever they were going to do with it. So that's where it got its nickname from but essentially it's just a zone above the scaphoid bone. The scaphoid bone is pretty much located, it's one of the metacarpals, pretty much located right here. And what's interesting about that is on this side of the arm, which is, I wrote flexor here because pretty much all the muscles that you find on this part of your arm are what are known as flexors. So, I mean, uh, well, if you look in an anatomy book, pretty much all the muscles of the forearm are going to have the word flexor in them as opposed to extensor on the dorsal side, whereas flexor is on the ventral side. So that's just a little note with that. But these, the white here is denoting basically the tendon sheaths that run along the hand here. So I can kind of zoom out here and you can kind of see. So just moving around the hand with these drawings, you can see that these tendons are very long and they create this zone here where basically it's kind of a cushion or kind of a, a triangular space. And interestingly, if there is any kind of wrist damage, so if you were 
falling, you brace your hand out, and your radius, which is on this side, your radius bone is on this side of your, arm, your hand, the thumb side. If there was damage there and it shoved, if the head of the radius actually shoved into the scaphoid bone, a doctor would go in and they would actually touch this snuff box area and they would really palpitate there to see if you would it elicit any pain. And if it did elicit pain, they could probably take a guess that you broke your hand, that you broke one of the bones in your wrist and they would probably set a cast or they would probably put you into physical therapy. And one of the last notes too I wanna to share with on this is this notion of directionality. So here I kind of drew just you know, a basic 180 degree grid. And I wrote uh, just as a reminder that the radius is on the thumb side and the ulna is on the lateral or the outside. So anytime there's a waving motion to the radius side, we call that radial deviation. And anytime we move over to the ulnar side, lateral deviation or ulnar deviation, there's always a decrease in the angle. So if I'm forming 90 degrees here with my thumb and index finger, the deviation is gonna literally cause a decrease in the angle if I keep the palm of my wrist mounted against this piece of paper and I don't move it. So you see that there's a decrease while there's an increase in this angle here. So it's an interesting note to help you memorize maybe for an exam or an anatomy test if that motion is asked, um, something that you can remember just by putting your hand straight down on a piece of paper and just kind of um, moving, manipulating the wrist in a way just like that, it's, it's pretty easy to remember. It's also easy to remember too because whenever you wave high like this to someone you're doing, you're not really saying hello or goodbye, you're deviating. So it's like I'm deviating to the left, deviating to the right, but it's like radial deviation, ulnar deviation, see you later, which is what I'm gonna do now. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment box below. Thanks.